I said, right now, you need to take all of your drugs and go talk to your pharmacist. And the pharmacist went, oh, my gosh, these guys need to get together. Right. You know? Uh, and so she called a meeting with these four guys and started straightening things out And because um, uh, he was on all these different drugs that were both interacting and, and doing some really bad things to him. And that is, a, you know, that's where, where we've gone. Uh, so between, like you, so, like you said, between being governed by, by insurance companies, um, where the only test they'll do for somebody who's hypothyroid is to do a TSH level on them, which will give you some information maybe 60% of the time, but that's what the, that's what the insurance companies are dictating doctors to do is do that as a test for hypothyroidism. We threw that, I threw that test out uh, in dogs you know, years ago because it was so incredibly unreliable. Um, and, um, and so we have them dictating what we're, what we're doing and, and, uh, or what doctors are doing, and then that on top of the specialization, we're, we're in a mess. And so it's great to hear doctors you know, waking up out of that because uh, they, you know, they just know that it has to be a large group. Yeah, I, I talk to a lot every, every week, and I, I just see the frustration and the, and, the, and the excitedness at the same time because they're ready to get out of that of that box but at the same you know at the same time they're frustrated being in the box and so it's kind of a catch-22 if they get out of the box will their colleagues tell on them you know report them to the medical boards and if they right but they're liberated if they do and their patients you know and appreciate it more if they do and I, I just think it just depends on the person if they can if they can handle the stress and the pressure of getting out of that box and I welcome it I'm glad to see the social change being implemented kind of uh, with some of these seminars that are being put, up, put on. Right. That's great. Well, I spoke at, I spoke at one human conference uh, back in 06. I went and spoke, uh, did, did my epilepsy paper on the, the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, um, which is an interesting group. Uh, the president, the president uh, of that, company, of that uh, organization uh, heard an interview that I did, a radio interview that I did uh, uh, for a, a, a guy out in, in, in England, a break for news, Clinton Dunn, who's an in, in investigative journalist, I guess. <laughs> so you put him very, you know, he's on, he's into so many things. And so one thing led to another. I ended up going up there and presenting my my paper on uh, on my work on epilepsy um, uh, to this group of doctors, and it was really an interesting experience. And that's an interesting group. You know, they, 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 they're, they're, they're tapping into some things. They're looking for this kind of thing. Uh, Joe Mercola, Dr. Mercola, one of my mentors, uh, you know, he, uh, he's, he's in, the, in that group, and he's a very wise guy. He's a DO. You know, he, he, the chiropractors and the DO has got it going on. You know, they, they know what's going on, you know. Right. Uh, and uh, they just do. They've just got that wisdom that carries them through. It's just incredible. The, the whole attitude is different. And so that group's loaded with those kinds of people. So there, there are these groups that are that are headed in the right direction, and uh, so I'm, that's why I'm just so encouraged for the future. Yeah, I got to say the same, and and I appreciate you coming on with me today and giving such a great thorough presentation of of high glutamic acid foods. That's the Guard Diet, right? I'm assuming glutamic right. acid restricted diet. That's right. The guard, the guard. Uh, you know, finally that acronym came to me because I was I was focusing on the on the glutamic acid and the aspartic acid. Of course, all of your foods that are rich in glutamic acid are also very rich in aspartic acid. Um, and as, aspartic acid in our diet, most people know as aspartame or NutraSweet. You know, NutraSweet and equal equal are are high concentrations of aspartic acid. And uh, and so um, it, it, we know because of what NutraSweet can do to people, um, as, what aspartame can do. And if people don't know, they just need to put aspartame syndrome in Google and, and, and read about what it's doing, including fibromyalgia, short-term memory loss, seizures, and everything else. They are, they, of course, they are in a balance in our neurons. Glutamic acid is being recycled out of the synapse into aspartic acid by the glial cells. And that's so. So if you put too much aspartic acid into a into an unhealthy neuron, you're going to get the same reaction as if you put too much glutamic acid into that unhealthy neuron. Um, and so finally, it, it struck me that I was been talking about this all this time, and I went, "Look at that glutamic glutamate aspartate restricted diet, the guard." Wow, that sounds that's pretty cool, <laughs> you know. So 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 I came up with the guard. Um, and but then I realized, of course, um, later on, as I found that we had the big four foods that were inducing villus atrophy, which was a key part to why you have epilepsy and you don't, 
you know, trying to figure out why that is, uh, why, why one individual has it and one doesn't, and why the spectrum disorder. And so then you realize that you've got those four foods damaging the gut, and when you get them off of those four foods, the villi will grow back. And so the guard took on its second meeting, the gut, uh, the gut absorption recovery diet. As we know, the biggest thing about the villus atrophy is that we're malabsorbing our nutrients, all of our vitamins, minerals, fats, and proteins, and every carbs and everything else. And so the key, the key is to reestablish, uh, reestablish absorption again. And so the guard also stands for the gut absorption recovery diet. And um, and then um, somebody else uh, coined another use for it that I just posted on Facebook. Uh, a group of raw feeders, they they call it the genetically appropriate raw diet. And so that's another another word another use of the of the acronym guard, but um, and so the 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 key really is the absorption part. You know um, the glutamic acid is a, is an after fact. Once the lectins have damaged the neurons, um, and the uh, and the and the malnutrition has also made these things unhealthy. Then you, you, once you're set up, it's the perfect storm. You have all of that happening. The malnutrition, the immune system is going down, the neurons are getting unhealthy, and then you, you pour glutamic acid on those neurons, and, um, and they just go bonkers. And it just depends on what part of the central nervous system you want to talk about. But uh, I give credit where credit is due. One of the things that came along that I read when I was reading about all of this was the work by Dr. Russell Blaylock, uh, who was a board-certified neurologist at Mississippi State at the time he wrote his book uh, called Excitotoxins, The Taste That Kills. Mm. 